So I'm pretty proud of myself as an adult at how I've grown in patience over the years. My wife and my children will tell you that over the course of time I've become much calmer and much more patient than I was just a few years ago. That's one of the gifts of life, isn't it? The gifts of children especially, is they teach you how to become more patient. You have to become more patient for the sake of surviving, really, when it comes down. But there are still some things that test my patience. Driving, stupidity, politicians, and what we did as a church this past Monday. This past Monday was the church's golf outing. And that little white ball, as most golfers will tell you, can test the patience of the best of people. And what's funny about it is that it's, it's not baseball. Nobody's throwing the ball at you and you gotta hit it. The ball doesn't go anywhere. It's right there. It's a little white ball. I'm 250 plus pounds, six foot three. I'm standing right over it. You should be able to hit it and make it go wherever you want it to go. It's not how it works. Very rarely does it do what you want it to do. And I have come to the conclusion that one of the reasons that Golf is so frustrating and tests patience, my patience, is because of expectations. See, for Monday's golf outing, I really went there with absolutely no expectations. It was the first time I was playing golf this season. So I figured, you know what, it's just a good day to spend some time with my son and with my family of faith, have a good day together, enjoy the weather, enjoy a meal, and, and go home. But then, I started off really well. For the first eight holes, Everything was going beautifully. I was playing out of my mind. I was making a par, I came close to pars, the ball was going where I wanted to go. And that's when it happened. I started to think to myself, maybe this is the day. Maybe this is the day I finally break 100. I have the best score possible. Maybe this is the day I don't self-destruct on one of the holes. That, my friends, was the kiss of death. The second half of my afternoon didn't go nearly as well as the first half of my afternoon. And there was one particular hole where after I hit the ball into the same tree three straight times, my patience went out the window and very inappropriate words came out of my mouth. The gospel lesson for this Sunday is Jesus is sending out the 70 and Luke's recording of it. And we hear that as Jesus sends out the 70 disciples to harvest the field, to spread the word of the gospel, to talk about the hope that Jesus gives, that he patiently manages their expectations so that they are not unprepared for what lays before them. He says to them, you are going to go out like lambs among wolves. That even though you're going to enjoy this job, there are going to be days, there are going to be things that are going to be a threat to you. There are going to be things that are uncomfortable to you. You're going to be out of your element. And then he says to them, go with nothing but what you simply need and stay in the same house. For those who receive you and want to hear the message should take care of you. They'll give you what you need, food and clothing and money and things like that. But most importantly, he says to them that not everyone's going to accept the message. Not everyone is going to joyfully and happily receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is very important for those disciples. Because Jesus knows as they go out, as they start to have success, as they start to see that the power of the Holy Spirit is upon them, and how the Holy Spirit has influence even over the demons, that their expectations are going to go higher and higher and higher. And then when they encounter those realities of life in this world, when there are those who don't want to receive their message, when there are those who are going to reject the gospel of Jesus Christ, he doesn't want their world to come crashing down upon them. He doesn't want them in desperation and despair and to lose the passion for the gospel. As a pastor, I greatly appreciate this gospel lesson that Jesus brings to us. Because one of the biggest challenges and temptations for pastors especially young and new pastors, is the temptation to feel that you have to be the savior for everyone. You have to be there for everyone. 
Sometimes pastors forget that they work for the Savior, but they themselves are not the Savior. And sometimes what happens that as a pastor is out there and doing the job of the calling and spreading the word of the gospel, when that's not heard or that's not received, or when the pastor tries to do things that'll make a difference or a change, or the pastor is looked upon scornfully by the world around us, it begins to tear up the pastor from the inside. It becomes to shred the pastor's self-esteem and desire to do the work of the gospel and spread the message that God has put before us. And that's why what Jesus says to those disciples as he sends them out about wiping the dust off their feet is so important. He's giving them permission to fail. He's saying to them, when you come to a town that's not going to hear the message, move on. Wipe the dust off your feet and use those feet to walk to another place that will be a harvest for the gospel. And the people at that time understood that wiping the dust off your feet was a common expression to say, you are leaving behind something that is unhealthy, something that's not working and moving forward. And this is a message that's important not just for pastors, but for all of us today. In this spiritually challenging time and ever-changing time that we live in today, it's important for us to know that it's okay sometimes to shake the dust off our feet and to move on. Yeah, we all know that in our baptisms we are called to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, to share the hope that fills us with some joy. But sometimes we must admit we are living in hostile territory, in hostile times. And sometimes we feel so emboldened and so dedicated to this mission that sometimes we're willing to do anything and everything to get somebody to hear the gospel message from us, somebody to hear our witness of Jesus. But sometimes we can go overboard and become offensive and become more of an obstacle to the gospel than a messenger of the gospel. Jesus is saying that as we go forth with this message of joy, as we are workers in the harvest field by witnessing our faith, that if it's not working, if it's being rejected, it's okay to move on. And what that means for us collectively as a church is that when we're trying new things and maybe they don't work, it's okay to try a different direction. When we've done something and all of a sudden it just doesn't seem to get the same response, it's okay to move on, shake the dust off our feet, and continue to go where the Spirit leads us. But when all is said and done, when the disciples came back from going out into the harvest field, Jesus really pointed out for them the one thing that was the most important. They were overjoyed and overconfident at all the success that they had had. Even the demons submit to us, they say. And Jesus responded to them by saying, Do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. That's really what it's all about. And that's really where everything else flows from. Us first knowing the joy and hope that we have in Christ, and then sharing it with others. Amen.